ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ಜಯಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರವಾತ್ಮ ವೃಂದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರವಾತ್ಮ ವೃಂದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರವಾತ್ಮ ವೃಂದ we continue reading from chaitanya charitamrita adilila chapter 7 text 143 krishnena charanane haya yadi anura krishna vinu anyatra karana hi rahega translation and purport by his divine grace as if the vedanta samishla kopa if one develops his love of god head and becomes attached to the lotus feet of krishna gradually he loses his attachment to everything else yeah. this is a test of advancement in devotional service as stated in shrimad bhagavatam canto 11 chapter 2 text 42 bhakti hi parish pareshanu bhavo viraktir anyatra cha in bhakti a devotee's only attachment is krishna he no longer wants to maintain his attachments to many other things so uh, we can say that um the soul the the soul when we say i want to be detached it's not possible it's not possible for the soul to be detached we say oh i want to give up everything no because we are always attached only we have to find the right attachment our correct attachment is being attached to krishna then automatically we will give up all the other lower attachments the unrequired attachments <laughs> so how can we get attached to krishna the more we hear about him the more we chant his names the more we will get attached to krishna by the process of devotional service although mahavadi philosophers are supposed to be very much advanced on the path of liberation we see that after some time they descend to politics and philanthropic activities many big sanyasis who were supposedly liberated and very advanced have come down again to materialistic activities although they left this world as mithya faults when a devotee develops in devotional service however he no longer as attachments to such philanthropic activities so what happens is if we get if we um get liberated also without surrendering to krishna we we may really get liberated we may reach the brahman platform we may like completely understand i'm the soul i'm not the body anymore but because we have not yet a developed our attachment for krishna we come back on the material platform again again we start identifying with the body because the soul needs some attachment it's not that the body needs attachment it's the soul because the body is dead you know once we leave the body it's it's gone so the attachment is with the soul not with the body so if we for some time even we come on the platform of brahman understand completely i am jivatma i am the soul i am brahman how long can we stay on that platform not long not long why because we have not got in the higher attachment to krishna then we are looking for some attachment and because the knowledge of krishna is not there we again get attached to the body <clears throat> then we will uh, then what happens generally in this case is this persons who were supposedly liberated they become great philanthropists they do a lot of philanthropy but again philanthropy is also a materialistic activity because it's um, related to the body it's related to the body so it's only our real detachment truly we can get detached is only when we can get attached to krishna so the devotee he is simply inspired to serve the lord and he engages his entire life in such service 
This is the difference between Vaishnav and Mahavadi philosophers. Devotional service, therefore, is practical, whereas Mahavadi philosophy is merely mental speculation. So if we really want true liberation, then we need to take up devotional service. Devotional service, which begins by hearing and chanting. And gradually, gradually, we will see that we are getting more and more attached to Krishna. And to the same proportion that we are getting attached to Krishna, we are getting detached from the material world. This is the most practical way of liberation. This is the only way of liberation. Because devotional service, it's not that, okay, we do it devotional service only till the time we are in the body. No. But it's this activity of the soul. The soul is always active. It's the natural sanatan dharma of the soul to serve. So it is an eternal activity. Not only that, oh, I will engage in devotional service to get liberated. No. But it continues even after liberation. Actually, pure devotional service begins from the platform of liberation. When we can completely understand I'm a part and parcel of Krishna, that's the time we can engage in pure devotional service. Reading on Panchama Purushartha Se Prema Mahadhana Krishna Ramadurya Raskaraya Ashwadhana. Love of Godhead is so exalted that it is considered to be the fifth goal of human life. By awakening one's goal of God, one's love of Godhead, one can attain the platform of conjugal love, tasting it even during the present span of life. So, what are the okay the, in the purport? Prabhupada is writing the Mayavadi philosophers considers the highest goal of perfection to be liberation mukti, which is the fourth perfectional platform. Generally, people are aware of four principal goals of life. Religiosity, Dharma, Economic Development, Artha, Sense Gratification, Karma, and ultimately Liberation, Moksha. So Dharma, Artha, Karma, and Moksha. Usually people think that this is the goal of human life. Dharma, act religiously. Why? To get Artha, to get opulence. Why? So that we can get karma, we can enjoy. And then after we do this, then we come to the point, oh, still I'm not feeling happy. Still there is frustration. Then moksha, I want mukti. I don't want anything to do with the material world. But devotional service is situated on the platform above liberation. In other words, when one is actually liberated mukta, he can understand the meaning of love of God at Krishna Prema. So after so many people think, okay, moksha, liberation, that's the end. Nothing to do now. Now I can just go to sleep. I've gotten liberated, so I go to sleep. No. What happens when one gets liberated? One engages in devotional service. Because one can completely understand, I am spirit soul, I am part and parcel of Krishna. I have loving relationship with Krishna. So acting in that relationship, when we love someone, we express that love. We express that love by doing things. So that is the, the true liberation. That's the activity of the soul. In other words, when one is actually liberated, he can understand the meaning of love of God at Krishna Prema. While teaching Rupa Goswami, Sri Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stated, Koti Mukta Madhaye Durlabha Eka Krishna Bhakta. Out of millions of liberated persons, one may become a devotee of Lord Krishna. So there may be millions of liberated people, many souls on the Brahman, many souls on the Brahman platform, out of millions of such souls, one will become a devotee of Lord Krishna. So it's not very easy. Even Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that out of millions of people coming, looking for perfection, one hardly knows me in truth. 
to really become a devotee of Krishna is very rare. Not everyone becomes a devotee of Krishna. So we have been given this opportunity by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. We should take, grab this opportunity with all of our, all of our heart because it's not a very easy thing. The most elevated Mahavadi philosopher can rise to the platform of liberation, but Krishna Bhakti, devotional service to Krishna, is transcendental to such liberation. Srila Vyasadeva explains this fact in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.1.2. So it's not Krishna Bhakti, it's not just going to give us liberation, but it's giving us love of Krishna. That is the highest platform that it, it goes beyond liberation. So in Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Vyasadeva, in the first canto, first chapter, second word, second verse, he says, Dharma prohijita kaitavo atra paramo nirmat saranam satam vedayam vastavam atra vastu shivadam tapatrayon mulanam completely rejecting all religions which are materially motivated. The Bhagavad Puran propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are pure in heart. So Shlavyasa Dev is saying that the Srimad Bhagavatam, it, it rejects the Kaitava Dharma, completely rejecting all religion which are materially motivated. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, they are materially motivated. But Bhagavatam is giving us pure devotional service is giving us the highest truth, the absolute truth. And it's understandable by those devotees, nirmat saranam satam, that those who are non-envious, pure in heart, can really understand what Bhagavatam is giving. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. So when we understand the truth, when we understand the truth means we are no more in illusion. And this is what Bhagavatam is giving us. Bhagavatam is trying to uproot our illusion, take away our illusion. And when there is no illusion, there will be no misery. Our misery is because of ignorance. Because of ignorance, we are suffering. Bhagavatam is giving us the highest truth. Srimad Bhagavatam, the explanation of the Vedanta Sutra is meant for Paramo Niramat Saranam, those who are completely aloof from jealousy. Mahavadi philosophers are jealous of the existence of the personality of Godhead. Therefore, the Vedanta Sutra is not actually meant for them. They unnecessarily poke their noses into the Vedanta Sutra, but they have no ability to understand it. Because as the author of the Vedanta Sutra writes in his commentary, Srimad Bhagavatam, it is meant for those who are pure in heart, Paramo Nirmat Saranam. If one is envious of Krishna, how can he understand the Vedanta Sutra or Srimad Bhagavatam? So what is the envy about? The envy of that, why is Krishna God? Oh, God is something vague. That, or you are God, I'm God. Maybe who knows what's God or maybe some God is some energy. All this is envy of Krishna. Envy that why is Krishna God? And if we follow this, then we are being envious. We need to rise above this envy. Krishna is Krishna. He's God. He is the creator. We simply have to accept it. This is what all the Vedas are saying. But if our envy is so high, we won't be able to understand. Why? Because we don't want to understand. Again, it comes to our desire just comes to the condition of our heart. If one is envious of Krishna, how can he understand the Vedanta Sutra or Srimad Bhagavatam? The Mahavadi's primary occupation is to offend the Supreme Personality of God at Krishna. For example, although Krishna demands our surrender in Bhagavad Gita, the greatest scholar and so-called philosopher in modern India has protested that it is not to Krishna that we have to surrender. Therefore, he is envious. Krishna says, Sarva Dharmam Parityagya. <clears throat> Krishna says, Surrender unto me. Devi hi eshagana mai mam maya Mam eva ye prapadyante maya metam tarantite. 
Krishna is saying that, surrender unto me. But if we say, no, it's not Krishna you have to surrender. It's something beyond Krishna, something inside of Krishna. It's to Krishna's knowledge or something this or that. We are being envious of Krishna. We are being envious then. So we have to give up this envy of Krishna. Just hear what Krishna is saying, accept it and follow it. And we will see that our heart can experience the highest love. Since Mayavadis of all different descriptions are envious of Krishna, they have no scope for understanding the meaning of the Vedanta Sutra. Even if they were on the liberated platform, as they falsely claim, love of Krishna is beyond the state of liberation. A fact stated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and re repeated here by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. So we need to give up this envy of Krishna. Then only we can get truly liberated. Because if we are envious of Krishna, if we are envious of God, we are going to continue living in the material world. The reason we are in the material world is because of this envy that we say there is no God. I am God or there is God is not a person. All this is coming from our envy of Krishna. And that is what is material life. So if we continue to be envious of Krishna, we will not be able to understand the scriptures. We will not be able to understand Krishna's instructions of Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. So what we have to do, we have to hear. We have to hear from the devotees. We have to chant the holy name so that this envy can go away from our heart and so that we can experience the love that each of us have. It's not that this love of Krishna is artificial imposition of the mind. No, it's there in each of us. Simply this love has been changed to envy. But we need to come back to the original, <clears throat> original condition of the heart. Love of Krishna. That is true liberation. So the more we hear, more we chant, then gradually gradually this envy will go away from our heart is that okay yeah so we'll stop here for today thank you so much for listening and enjoying it chaitanya charitamrita ki jai shlaka upad ki jai gaur bhakti ki jai hari krishna